you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. There you are. Uh, Ken Thurston, New York, huh? All right. I, Monsieur Savadel, welcome you to Papayete, Tahiti. Thanks, Savadel. By the way, what's this mine accident I heard about? Somewhere in this vicinity, wasn't it? Uh, terrible tragedy, Monsieur. Terrible. Uh, an explosion. One of our most welcome guests, uh, Monsieur Robert Sullivan, was lost in it. Oh, such a nice gentleman, too. So quiet, so refined, so hardworking, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Where did um, Sullivan usually hang out, you know? Well, frequently at the Café Chinois, down on the waterfront. But I do not think that you would care to patronize a place Cap- like that. Cafe Chinois, huh? This the key to my room? Oui, monsieur. Room 25. It is quite comfortable, I assure you. And if there is anything I'll at all... I'll see you later, Oui, monsieur, Thurston, oui. Howdy, Sabadell. Looks like we've got a new homesteader around these parts. Hmm? And of just what concern is this to you, Monsieur Let's Cook? Let's see. What brand he put down for himself in the register? Hmm. Ken Thurston. Well, that just goes to show. To show what, Monsieur Cook? Savadell, I'd have swore that hombre would have signed that register just by making an X. <laughs> Oh. Uh, not for some mistake, waiter. I didn't order any. Martini. With an onion in it. Wait a minute. Who ordered this for me? Uh, number one gentleman over there. Uh, yes, uh, excuse, please. Excuse. Number one gentleman? Oh, no, not again. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Say, gone, Selspin. I thought I'd give you the brush in Singapore. Oh, I followed you down here. Special chartered job aeroplane. We even got here ahead of you. So here I am ready to offer you my invaluable assistance. No, thanks, Pam. But, Mr. Thurston... Well, monsieur, you're enjoying the pleasures of Chinois. Me? I, uh, wasn't, but things are beginning to look brighter. Hello, baby. Sit down and converse with us. Even talk, maybe. Yes. Majda would like to talk about phosphate mines, Mr. Thurston. Phosphate mines... The door to your right. It leads to a small garden. I shall meet you there in two minutes to five. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, you surprise even me. Such a fast worker I never saw. Well, shall we go out to the garden? See you later, Pagan. Huh? But Mr. Thurston. Oh, well. Waiter, take back this martini. <laughs> Monsieur Thurston, Bart Sullivan has said to me many times, if anything should happen to him, I want to get in touch with you. Did he tell you why he thought something might happen to him? No, monsieur. I only know he was worried about the phosphate mine. 
And I am certain he did not die by accident. Well, so am I. Who else might know something about this? There was one man. Bob would speak with him quite often at Chinua. Professor Powers. Powers? Who's Professor Powers? He owns a plantation back in the hills, near the mine. They had many long talks together. Perhaps he knows something. That all? No. There is another. A man who comes from... No, Texas. hold it. Hold it, Nasha. Something moving over there. Quiet now. Shots were meant for you, Mr. X. Mr. Thurston, why do we have to ride through this jungle anyway? This is the road to Professor Power's plantation and the phosphate mine. But why do we have to go to these places tonight? That section wasn't hanging around just for the fun of it. There's something big going on around here. We've got to find out what it is fast. Mr. Thurston, you got this Johnny Cook all wrong. You wouldn't do it. All right, Sagan, let's have it. What do you know about him? Well, it, it, it was like this. I, I, I wanted to come to Tahiti to help you, you understand, but, but I had a little problem. Yeah, you were broke. Go on. Yes, well... <clears throat> There was the seaplane at the dock. And I heard Johnny Cook say he was flying here. So... I see. How much is Cook paying you to keep an eye on me? Mr. Thurston. All right, there you are. Now, there's the mine entrance up ahead. We'll go the rest of the way on foot. But, Mr. Thurston, I don't get it. Why should we... Oops! Stop right there, gentlemen. Well... A little late in the season for man hunting, isn't it? Who are you? You can forget about my name. And if you're thinking of entering the mine tonight, forget about that, too. Go on and get away from here. And if you think I don't mean... The mine! It's, it's gone. Yeah, they gone buried. Under hundreds of tons of rock. Look at that girl. She's coming toward us. Mr. Thurston, with that, with that cannon in her hand. Well, gentlemen, the mine is completely destroyed. Bob Sullivan is dead. Najda is dead. Somebody's guilty and somebody is going to pay. Any idea who? There's a very good one. And I'm looking at him right now. Mr. X. Continue with Bridget Ayers' Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. With Europe in desperate need of phosphate to help ease the critical world food shortage, Ken Thurston's in Tahiti investigating a series of so called accidents occurring to a big phosphate mine. Well, anyone else you'd like to blame for this mine explosion, Mr. X? No, it looks as though I'd better come up with someone. Yes, just as soon as I take that rifle away from you. Oh, that... I'm not going... Yeah. That's better. I should have killed you first and asked questions afterwards. Uh Uh-huh. That's Johnny Cook's advice? Johnny told me that I... I suppose you think you're pretty smart. 
Who are you? Meta Boyd. I'm Professor Powers. What's that supposed to tell me? Everything or nothing. Any other questions? Mm, a couple. But they can wait. And if you're quite through with me, I think I'd like to. Sure, anything you say. Thanks. All right, boy. I'll be seeing you around, Mr. Pearson. The next time I won't take any chances. It is, Monsieur Thurston. Come in, please. Come in. Thanks, Abadell. What are you doing here, Professor Powers? Well, my, my nightly chess game with the Professor, Monsieur. It is delightful relaxation after my trying days at the hotel. Where is it, Abadell? Guest? Ah, mais oui. Monsieur Thurston, Professor Powers. Huh? So I've interrupted your game, but I thought you'd like to know about the phosphate mine next door here. Someone uh, blew it up a little while ago. Blew up the... Oh, monsieur, what are you saying? This is uh, unbelievable. Well, don't tell me you didn't hear the explosion. Well, we did hear it, monsieur, but we mistook it for thunder. A storm brewing in the hills. Yes, yes. There's a storm brewing, all right, Salvador. Only it isn't in the hills. It's among the hungry people in this world. By the way, you're a physics professor, aren't you, Powers? I, um... Uh, yes, I was before I retired. But how'd you know? The door to your laboratory is open. I see you have a cathode ray tube and a Geiger counter in there. Well, sorry to disturb your game, gentlemen. I, um... Uh, I'll let you figure out your next move in peace, Professor. Though even a child could tell that almost any move you make would put him in checkmate. Good night, Sabadell. Go straight to the hotel, Pagan. If the chief calls before I get back about a cable guy I sent him, you take the message for me, see? Huh. can always depend on Mr. Zeltschmidt. Oh, yeah. But where are you going? Down to the harbor. Harbor? There's nothing down there but boats. And Johnny Cook's seaplane. Kind of safe to have aboard a steel train. Well, howdy, Thurston. Hello, Cook. I didn't expect you back so soon. Yeah, I reckon. Some time since I've seen a safe made of lead instead of steel. Yeah, that's right. Now, why would a man want a safe made of lead, you reckon? If you put down that 45 for a minute, we can talk it over. I don't know if I rightly should, Thurston. What do you think, Maida? Maida? That's right, mister. Uh, oh, that was right neat, honey, right neat. Johnny, what was he doing here? I'll tell you later, sugar. Got a little old job to do first. Job? Yeah, wait till I towed him over to the cargo door. Okay. Oh. Yeah. There. Mighty peaceful out yonder in the harbor, Thurston. I reckon maybe you could sleep right comfortable out there. Mr. Thurston residence, a hotel room, that is. A call for Monsieur Thurston from Les Etats-Unis. Go ahead, please. Hello? Hello, that's you, Ken. Oh, hello, Mr. Chief. 
How's the weather in New York? I'll take that call, Peg. I'll... Huh? Oh, sure, Mr. Thurston. Hey, you... You're so slopping wet. What happened? I was lucky. Miss Boy didn't hit hard enough. Huh? Oh, Chief. Uh, what, uh... What have you got for me on Johnny Cook? Uh, Ken, he's a former pilot of the 8th Air Force. Uh, th- Thunderbird Squadron. Thunderbird? That's the one Bob Sullivan flew in. That may explain a lot of things. Ah, uh, not to me, it doesn't. Anyway, since the war, he's been flying a freelance cargo plane out of Tahiti. Yeah, that's about all I have right now. What about you? Things are plenty hot here, are they? Uh, sounds like we've got listeners, Chief. I'll call you later. So long. Pagan, what do you know about that lead safe Johnny brought back from Singapore? Safe? Oh. Oh, oh, you mean the one Professor Powers wanted? Powers? Sure. Sure, I should have known. It all ties in. Huh? What ties in with what? Phony chess games, Geiger counters, phosphate mines. Come on, Pagan, we're going back to that plantation. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, uh, nobody's home here. With all those lights burning, maybe the door. Yeah. Let's go in. Hmm. Join Zampi. Let's try the laboratory. <gasps> Look at all this junk. Tubes, bottles, gas burners. What a man. I never... <gasps> Mr. Rex, there's the old shoe lying under the bench. There's a foot in it. Yeah. Professor Powers' foot. He's dead, Pagan. But, but who killed him? And, and why? Maybe that great powder on his shoes can tell us. So that's where all those dusty footprints came from. But why are you tasting it, Mr. Thurston? It's only dust. The phosphate salt. Powers was in that mine tonight. But the entrance was blown to pieces. How could he get in? That wouldn't be thought if there was another entrance from this plantation. Now, if we can follow those footprints. Where if I take this gadget with me? Okay, let's go. Mr. Thurston, what are we going to do with that little bar? There you go. We're going to play a detective. <laughs> down in this hotel in the ground. Anyways, just because we found the tunnel in the hillside doesn't mean we have to. That sound, what was it? What was that? It's coming from that box you're carrying. A time bomb? You're carrying a time bomb? It's going to explode. Hey, John, this is a Geiger counter. Fix that way in the presence of radioactivity. And it's done its detecting job for us. Shut it off. Detecting job? What did that thing detect? Take a look at the walls of that crosscut opening into this tunnel. Okay, Mr. X, I'm looking. So what? That pitch blend. The ore that contains radium. Radium? That's why the Geiger counter clicked. And that's why somebody sabotaged this mine. It did? To gain control of that ore. And that's the reason for Professor Powell's lead safe. It's the only way you can handle that stuff. He was... What, Mr. Mr. X, somebody's down here with us. He's coming this way. Yeah. Turn off that flashlight. Hello, Mado. Ken Thurston. That's right. What are you doing down here? Trying to find out why your uncle was so interested in this mine? Yes, I was. What difference does that make? <laughs> you don't make any. We caught you cold-handed looking for this radio 
She's the guilty one, Mr. Thurston. Let's take her over. Not so fast, Pagan. She's not guilty of anything. Huh? But at the mine which she shot us and knocking you out. And now... She was trying to protect the mine and her uncle. Huh? Well, well, then it's like I said all the time. Johnny Cook. Wrong again, Pagan. Mr. Sabadell. What? Sabadell? The hotel clerk? That is quite correct. Mr. Savadell, what are you... Mr. X, it's him. Do not move, any of you. You will notice I have a gun in my hand. I can shoot quite straight with it, I assure you. Hmm. Not Don Professor Powers found that out. Quite so. But then Powers had outlived his usefulness to me. Yeah. After he'd analyzed the pitch pen for him and discovered it held more than radium. <laughs> then you know what else it contained, Monsieur Thurston? Savadell? Pitch pen's just a common name for oxide of uranium. Uranium? That's right, Mila. That's right, Mila. That's why I was willing to kill for it. Bob Sullivan, Najda, Powers. Oui, monsieur, and now it is you. Not sir. this time, Sabadell. This thing's too big to let you get away with it. Let's put that gun. Do not be in a rock, fuel, Thurston. You'll be dead long before you reach me. Well, I'm going to try. Let me have it, Sabadell. Very oh, well, monsieur. But not the way you wish. Now that you are close enough, so I cannot possibly miss. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. X. Well, howdy. Looks like I parted me a genuine ring-tailed skunk. Yeah. Thanks, Cook. That was good shooting. I figured Mater wouldn't be down here alone. Huh? Mr. Thurston, you're alive. It's that Sabadell who is there. Ain't it the truth? You heard, Johnny. We were wrong about Mr. Thurston. Wrong all the time. We sure were, honey. But Bob Sullivan told me to keep an eye open for Ken Thurston, the man called X. How was I to know he meant a pure blood? Instead of being the maverick, I figured it murdered him. Well, so you took things in your own hands. Made your own rules. Just like Savadell did. That's no good, Johnny. This world of ours has got too small and shaky for any man to play the game his own way, according to his own rule. Whether the stakes are food or uranium, there's only one way of game that it'll end, Johnny. In a checkmate for all of us. Before introducing our star, Herbert Marshall, once again, I'd like to read a telegram which is addressed to him from the head of the Columbia Broadcasting System. Bart, I'm sure you won't mind my reading it on the air. Of course not, Wendell. It says, Dear Bart, heartiest congratulations to you and your sponsor, Frigidaire Division of General Motors Corporation, on the completion of 100 consecutive Frigidaire shows. May I say to you personally and to everybody connected with the man called X, that I think you're doing a grand job. Best proof of that is the millions of people who listen to you every Sunday night at this time. Now as you start on your way to the 200th Frigidaire Show, all of us at CBS send our very best wishes to all of you on The Man Called X. Signed, William S. Paley, Chairman of the Board, Columbia Broadcasting System. Well, Wendell, what can I say in answer to something I don't accept? Thanks, CBS. Thanks on behalf of our sponsor, Frigidaire, with whom we are celebrating this 100th broadcast. And thanks to you of our listening audience for your loyalty week after week. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall, and so... Until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. And any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental.
is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.